Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to Physics Lecture for Semester 1. For this semester, you are having 15 chapters overall. And for today's lecture, we'll start with Chapter 1, Physical Quantities and Measurements. For the first subtopic of this lecture, you have dimensions and physical quantities and the learning outcome is to define dimensions. Dimensions is defined as a technique or method that relates physical quantity in terms of combination of basic quantities. And the way we write the dimension is by having a bracket and a, the physical quantity inside the bracket. Or we can write a symbol. So this is the example of how we write the dimension. The dimension of mass is bracket mass or bracket small m or the symbol capital M and it's normally written as capital M. So these are the dimensions of basic quantities with their unit. So we have mass, we have length, we have time, electric current, temperature, amount of substance with symbol M, L, T, A or I, theta and n. Why do we learn dimension? It is going to be applied to determine the dimension of the physical quantity, to check the homogeneity of an equation, and also to construct an equation with given quantities. We have to know that dimensions cannot be added or subtracted. Now it comes to the second subtopic of this chapter. There are four learning outcomes that we are going to cover for this subtopic. So we have the first learning outcome is to define the scalar and vector quantities. The second one to illustrate the unit vectors in Cartesian coordinate and to state the physical meaning of scalar product. And lastly, to state the physical meaning of vector product. Let us first understand the meaning of scalar and vector. Scalar quantity is defined as a quantity with magnitude only and the vector quantity is defined as a quantity with both magnitude and direction. Let us refer this case. This boy is kicking the other boy. He actually gives a force to this boy and this force is having magnitude and direction. Magnitude is the strength of the force and direction is the direction of the force towards this boy. Here are the examples of scalar and vector quantities. We have mass, time, temperature, pressure, electric current, work and energy for scalar. And for vector, we have displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, electric field and magnetic field. Let us focus on vectors. Vector is represented by an arrow. We have example here, vector S. So this arrow is for vector S. The length of an arrow is representing the magnitude of the vector S. And the direction of the arrow is telling us the direction of vector S. The vector is denoted by a, cap by a letter with a small arrow on top of it. The next learning outcome for 1.2 is to illustrate the unit vectors i, j, and k in Cartesian coordinate. The unit vector means a vector whose magnitude is 1 and it is dimensionless. The notation of unit vector is a hat, b hat, and c hat, for example. The magnitude of the unit vector is 1 and for a vector, it is actually consists of a few unit vectors. Unit vector for three dimensions exist. We have x exists that is represented by i hat, y axis represented by j hat, and lastly z axis that is represented by k hat. Vector can be expressed in a Cartesian form which consists of x, y, and z axis. The unit vector in x axis is represented by i hat. The unit vector for y axis 
is called j hat and the unit vector for z axis is called k hat. If we have a vector in between these three axes, we can write down the, the vector in this form. This is the magnitude of this vector. And the formula for the magnitude of this vector is using this equation. Here is an example of how we express a vector. In this example, we have vector s. So the way we write vector s is 4i hat plus 3j hat plus 2k hat. As we know, vectors can be added and subtracted. It is also can be multiplied. We have two types of multiplication of vector that are scalar product or dot product and one more is cross product. Scalar product or dot product is written as a dot b. It is equal to the magnitude of a multiplied by the component of b parallel to a. a dot b, a multiplied by the component of b parallel to a. For this example, the magnitude, the component of B that is parallel to A is equal to B cos theta. Hence, we have A dot B is equal to AB cos theta. The scalar product is a scalar quantity. Meanwhile, we have vector or it is also known as cross product. It is written as A cross B and it is equal to the magnitude of A multiplied by the component of B perpendicular to A. Vector product will produce a third factor, which is perpendicular to both of the original factors. So let's say we have A cross B. The new vector that is produced or the third vector is vector C. The magnitude of the third vector is given by magnitude of A cross B. It is, it is equal to AB sine theta, where the angle here, theta, is the angle between two vectors. Vector product is a vector quantity, and the direction of vector C, the new vector, is determined by right-hand rule. Okay, now we look at A cross B. Now, this is the vector A, and this is the vector B. A cross B will produce a new vector C. To determine the direction of vector C, we are going to use our right hand rule. So now, we are going to swipe our right hand from A to B. We will produce a new vector that is called as vector C, pointing upward or out of the pitch. Okay, now, Let's look at the case of B cross A. This is the vector B and this is the vector A. B cross A is, can be shown again by the right hand rule. Now we swipe our hand from B to A and it will produce a new vector that is directed into the page which is in opposite to the previous case. So this time it is negative C. Now we continue with chapter 2, Kinematics of Linear Motion. In subtopic 2.1, Linear Motion, we have two learning outcomes to cover. The first one is to, to define a few types of velocity and also acceleration. And the second learning outcome is to discuss the physical meaning of displacement time graph, velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. This is the meaning of kinematics of linear motion. It is defined as the studies of motion of an object in a straight line. A straight line is referred to the linear motion. Without considering the effects that produce the motion and what causes the motion. There are two types of motion, one-dimensional and two-dimensional motion. One-dimensional motion involves one at this and two-dimensional motion will involve x and y axis. For the next learning outcome, we are going to define instantaneous velocity, average velocity, uniform, 
velocity and instantaneous acceleration average and uniform acceleration. Before that, we have to understand the meaning of velocity and acceleration. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement and it is a vector quantity and the acceleration is the rate of, velo rate of change of velocity with SI unit meter per second squared and it is also a vector quantity. Instantaneous velocity means the velocity at a particular instant of time along the path of motion or the instantaneous rate of change of displacement. Let us refer this displacement against time graph. We focus at point C. Now we draw a line at this point C and we call it as tangent line. The slope of this tangent is called as instantaneous velocity with the gradient of ds over dt. On the other hand, average velocity is the change in velocity divided by the time taken to make the change. Let's say we want to find the average velocity from time t1 to t2 and now we draw a line from point extrapolation point B to E. The gradient of this line is equal to average velocity with equation S2 minus S1 divided by T2 minus T1. And lastly, uniform velocity. It means the magnitude of displacement change at a constant rate and along a fixed direction. In this example, the uniform velocity is from point A to B. And the gradient of this graph of displacement against time is equal to constant. For acceleration, the definition of each type of it is quite similar with velocity. It has instantaneous acceleration, average and uniform acceleration. Here is the summary of all the definitions of the types of acceleration. The next learning outcome is to discuss the physical meaning of the displacement against time graph, velocity against time and acceleration against time graph. So the most important characteristic of the graph that we are going to analyze is the gradient of the graph and also the area under the graph. For example, we have the gradient of displacement against time graph is representing velocity. Displacement against time graph. If we look at this, the gradient of displacement against time graph is equal to velocity. If the gradient is increasing, if the gradient, so the displacement in this case is increasing and the gradient is constant. The gradient of the displacement against time graph is equal to velocity. Because of the gradient is constant, the velocity is constant. In this case, the gradient, the displacement is increasing exponentially, and the gradient is increasing, uh, is increasing from smaller gradient to higher gradient, meaning the velocity is increasing. For the velocity time graph we can analyze that the gradient of the velocity time graph is equal to acceleration and the area under the velocity time graph is, is equal to displacement. For this case, the velocity is increasing means the acceleration is constant because the gradient is constant. And for this case, the velocity is increasing exponentially and because of the gradient is from lower gradient to higher gradient means the acceleration is increasing. And for this case, the velocity is constant, means the acceleration is zero. Lastly, for the acceleration versus time graph, we can analyze that the area under the acceleration versus time graph is equal to velocity. If we, if we read through this graph, we can analyze that the acceleration is increasing. And for this graph, the acceleration is constant. To have a clearer understanding, let's take a look how the graph of displacement against time is converted into the graph of velocity against time and then it can be translated into the graph of acceleration against time. 
So based on this first graph of displacement against time, we can see that the form of the graph is a straight line. So the gradient at all parts of this graph is constant. The gradient of displacement against time graph is representing the velocity, meaning the velocity is constant. So from this information, we can have the graph of velocity against time. So we have the constant value of velocity and the graph is, posit is having positive gradient. So we are going to put this line at positive side of velocity against time graph. And the gradient of velocity against time graph for this case is equal to zero. And the gradient is also representing acceleration. So acceleration is equal to zero. Then we can transfer this information to acceleration versus time graph. And we are going to have zero value of acceleration. Okay, now we have one more example here. So for this example, we have the graph of S against time with exponential increasing graph. So if you look at this graph, the gradient is from lower to higher gradient. Okay, meaning that the gradient of this graph is increasing. And also we have to know that the, gra the gradient of S against T is equal to velocity okay so from this information we can have the graph of velocity against time with increasing value okay and from this graph of velocity against time we can have the gradient that is constant along the line of this graph so velocity is constant and also we have to know that the gradient of v against t graph is telling us about acceleration so acceleration is constant so from this information we can have the graph of acceleration against time so we have a constant value of acceleration since the gradient of this velocity against time is positive so we have to place this line at the positive side of acceleration against time graph okay that's all for chapter 2.1 thank you very much